Okay. All right. Just a audio test. Nice. Looks good. All right. So for um, I guess it's gonna be for YouTube since no one's on yet. But <laughs> anybody that is watching, uh, I just installed the or set up the Twitch highlighter extension in VS Code. So supposedly we can. Um, Oops, zooming in the wrong screen there. Uh, supposedly we can, by we, I mean anybody watching, can, or at least try typing a message. Um, let me open up some code. Let's look here. So if we wanted to say highlight line 89, we can go exclamation point line 89, oops, 89. No, it didn't do anything. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm doing the chatting. Um, to highlight a line. Oh, to unhighlight. What? To highlight a line, use the highlight. Okay, let's try that again. Highlight 89. <laughs> okay, this is really anticlimactic. Um, okay, it says I have a viewer. Do you want to jump on and try some of this uh, highlighter stuff I'm trying out here? Supposedly, uh, with the Twitch hi highlight extension, I think is what it's called. Uh, if you type into the uh, the chat there, I think it's exclamation line or exclamation highlight 89. It's supposed to highlight it, but it's not working. Nope. Uh, yeah, good point. <laughs> Always could be zoomed in more. <laughs> Uh, hey Brian, do me a favor. Try um, try typing this into the chat. Exclamation point highlight eighty nine, or I guess any any line number. I want to see if it's supposedly this extension is supposed to highlight lines through the chat. Oh, that is really unexciting. It didn't work. Uh, hmm. So this is the extension. Supposedly, Twitch highlighter in the house. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, let me try something else. Uh, I'm gonna disconnect and reconnect. It should show up in chat. Wait, starting, stopped. Oh no, chat. Okay. Um. Just go to highlighter bot. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna walk through the steps again. Um, oh, you know what? Um, doesn't have channels. This. I wonder if these docs are just a little outdated. So I've already entered in my. My credentials, tie line use, exclamation point highlight or line, line number. Additionally, you can include comment. Oh, this guy got it working. Okay, let's. Uh, Well, let's try just entering this in manually. Twitch highlighter dot channels equals. I think my channel is just the posh wolf. 
Um, let's find out. I'm going to try disconnecting and reconnecting. Nothing. I am so sad because that's... Oh! Oh! It worked. What? All right. Sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I, I, I don't know it's, uh, if... Um... Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, to do multi-lines, it doesn't look like that worked. Um, let's let's see what the syntax is. So I think the syntax was slightly different. Uh, maybe try it uh, with no spaces. Let me go back to the code. Go ahead and try that again without the space between the line numbers and the dash. And I'll wait patiently since there is a little delay. Why did that not work? Hmm. What's well, cool? Um, how do I un what, how I can unhide hide it now? <laughs> uh. I wonder if I gotta go in the chat now and just say line. Oh, this is this is actually pretty cool. Um, I just obviously don't know how to use it yet. Oh, with the oh with the other exclamation point on. Okay, you were actually reading the documentation better than I was. Okay, so now that I'm back in it, let's try it again. Doesn't work for me apparently. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm trying to type it in the uh, online. Ow. Oh. Uh, I'm. Oh, okay. So there we go. So if I type it through the um, the actual um, web page instead of through Streamlabs OBS, then it actually does does it for me as well. Okay. Cool. That's awesome. Sweet. All right. Thank you, Brian. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, there we go. There's the multi-line. How's it going, Elio? Testing out the uh, the uh, 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 Twitch highlighter extension in VS Code. Uh, because it, I don't know, it kind of looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you got comments about code, you just got to, uh, just like what Brian's got there, that, uh, uh, that, um, syntax or to unhighlight it with an exclamation point in front of the line numbers 83 to 85 I think okay sweet it even works for a range okay nice that's pretty cool it's gonna be a little weird being delayed but yeah I don't know we'll, we'll see we'll see if it's useful if people like it we'll leave it there if it gets too annoying I might just remove it but I think it's kind of cool uh, okay so um, where are we at for today so now we got that all figured out. Uh, so I uh, so after the summit, um, and it was good. Actually, I saw both of you guys, both Brian and Dilo. Yeah, it's good to see you here again. Um, I got a lot of feedback on the curl to PS, and I can also now see on this white screen that you can see part of my uh, green screen. Uh, this so the shirt that I'm wearing today. This is a light blue shirt. If I if the settings are are off. Here, actually, I can show you guys. Uh, so the so the normal settings that I have for my green screen is like this. And what? It looks fine now. Okay, well, before it was, you could see through my shirt, kind of. And by see through it, I mean see to the green screen behind me. <laughs> uh, okay, um, sorry. I got sidetracked there. Okay, so at the summit... Um, got a lot of feedback on the curl to PS, uh, so I, I've put in a couple of uh, issues that I'm going to be working on. Uh, first, a bu bug that I found when I was uh, preparing for the lightning demo I did uh, was that if the curl to PS command has a switch parameter in it uh, that doesn't have a parameter value, because switch parameters don't, 
uh, then it assumes that the next parameter name is a um, is an actual is the value of that parameter. And by by that, let me actually show you guys. So I uh, so here's the presentation I did. So initially, this command right here. So curl. We got request. You notice we got the the parameter name. This is what I'm referring to as a parameter name. And then the actual parameter value there. Uh, so I don't remember exactly what the oh there you can see you can kind of see through my my shirt. That's just that's just due to like the lighting and then this blue compared to the green of my green screen. Um, uh, actually, let's let's just pull this up because this actually I, I pulled this straight from uh, straight from it, some API docs. Uh, so from here, I think I was looking at getting tickets. Uh, yeah, uh, in this case, it was using dash dash location, and so if we if we put this in here, uh, let me oh, import the module first. So let me show you guys what does happen. So now the IRM string, uh, you notice that it worked. Okay, am I just making stuff up? <laughs> I was having problems before. I promise. Uh, okay. I didn't fix that either. At least I don't think I did. And I got the dash dash location, yeah. Hmm. I'm making a fool of myself. Okay, maybe if if it's in front of a parameter name that only has a single uh, dash in front of it. Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Sorry. I um, should update my issue. Well, actually, nah, actually, it's, it's not really worth it to do that because it's going to be fixed either way. Uh, so let me just explain what I'm looking at here, and I'm not blocking it. Uh, so, so this invoke rest method command down here, it has the URI, which uh, it pulled out of the uh, the headers here. Uh, but oh, another bug is uh, that it only grabbed the first part of the URI and not the rest of it. So you can see that down there. Mm, that is a problem. All right. Well, Mark chalked that up to check on as well. Uh, but also, we got the method get. So we got dash dash request get. When, but we don't have this, so dash h is a header. We don't have this except header in here. We should have this added in here. And that's because uh, all my t in my testing, it takes this location as the parameter name and then the dash h as the parameter value. And inside of that class, uh, so it switches the parameter name. I'm not going to go into super detail here uh, until we get, dig into it. Um, and if it, it's just got a default that does it verbose, good point, it does it verbose. But the verbose output doesn't work. Interesting. Oh, of course the verbose output doesn't work. Okay, well, I'm going to fix another bug. All right. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I want to see if that, I, I want to, well, okay, so that verbose output isn't important right now. So what we need to do is do some regular expression editing. Uh, so essentially, uh, and I, and if anyone's got questions as I explain this, let me know, uh, because this, I'm going to have to explain this to myself <laughs> out loud to remember how it works. Um, so this this uh, this string, this regular expression here, it is looking for a, a um, here, let's just open up some scratch here. I think I got a scratch file. So what it's looking for is either you got a primer name, and this is either one or two dashes, but that's not important for, for, the, for the rest of the regular expression. And then we either have um, a string value enclosed in single quotes or we have it enclosed in double quotes 
or it's not enclosed in quotes and there's no spaces in it. And so in this regular expression, I have the parameter value. So the parameter value is either in single quotes or it's in double quotes. So the, the pipe operator here is the or. Or it is in not in quotes, but it is anything that isn't a space. So in regular expressions, slash s is space. Uh, and then the inside of the square brackets with the caret character means any character that does a not isn't that. And then the plus, of course, is uh, one or more. Uh, but So the issue here is that what it really should be is if it doesn't have quotes, it shouldn't also be a dash. The first character shouldn't also be a dash, but any of them after can. So here, what, what we're going to do is some testing. Uh, so I'm going to have, so either it is anything but a space or the f first, well, anything but a space. Okay, actually, you know, okay. like I said, regular expressions, I got to talk myself through them. Um, so if it's not a space, the first character cannot be a dash. Or can it? Depends on the parameter. Gosh darn it. Um, we're going to make an executive decision here and assume that the first character should not be a dash. <laughs> uh, okay, so then we need a parameter value and... Actually, this is going to be a lot easier than I expected. Uh, does anybody know if the dash needs to be escaped in regular expressions? I don't remember. Ooh, that's a good point. <laughs> I always kill myself, and I, I don't use like the 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 testers here. Uh, here here's that link for anyone that's that's. Uh, that's curious. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm not familiar with this one specifically, uh, but here, you know what? We can also just test it really quick too uh, by just putting a, a slash there. Because uh, I believe, so I'm actually, uh, I think I've got, so I'm working in PowerShell Core 6.2, and somebody's trying to chat with me. Hold on a second. Oh, OK, that can wait. Uh, so I believe we can actually debug classes in the same in the session. So let's do this. Whoops. I want the, oh, not, I just ran F8. Oh, got to load. So I've got, an, I got two types in this uh, module. One is the URL type um, that needs some love. Uh, but this essentially takes the URL and then pulls out all the different pieces of it. You can see here. And the curl command class is dependent on that. So we should now be able to... Where's my scratch at? Okay. Curl screen. So let's go curl command. Okay, so this should be this one. Could go raw command, URL method, headers. No verbose output. Um, so actually let's just let's just build this really quick to get that. Let's invoke build. Oh, I did not expect to have. Oh, did not expect to have errors. Oh, uh, so switching to PowerShell Core. I don't have PyPS in PowerShell Core. In fact, I don't even know if PyPS supports PowerShell Core. Oof. Uh, let's find out. Try to find out. Please support PowerShell Core. Ah, okay, so that's good. That's good. That's good. 
So then let's try that invoke build again. Nice. Okay, sweet. So I'm going to remove the module, re-import the newly built module. And for those of you that aren't familiar, so invoke build uh, is just a, a build. Uh, it's like PSAKI if you use it. And if you haven't, it essentially takes all my scripts and bundles them into that .ps1, PSM1. Okay, so now if we look at the scratch here. Where's my, did I have a verbose or was it in the presentation one? I think it was in the presentation one. Okay, so let's, let's do verbose. Okay, I don't know how to make verbose output work inside of a class. <laughs> If someone knows how to make that happen, let me know. Uh, otherwise, we are going to truck along here because it worked that time. So the verbose output I would have expected um, is inside of the switch statement. So it gets the parameter name. I would have expected it since I don't have location in one of these options and location was passed as a parameter. It should have written a verbose uh, by the, for the default output. Um, so well, I'm, I'm going to worry about that another time because it worked like I expected it to uh, the other other. let's see but that was location so I was right in front of the H before that's what didn't work and this did work from before so let's try this yep, that looks that looks Good. So request is method get headers. We got the authorization. So in this case, this has basic authentication in it, which is where those uh, basic headers, this authorization basic comes into play. With PowerShell 6.2, there is an option to do a um, dash. I'm making stuff up when I could just be. Uh, ooh, whoops, testing it here. Um, did I just delete that out of there? No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, invoke rest method has an authentication parameter, which you can say basic, bare, or none, or OAuth. And so in this case, we would be expecting, passing it basic authentication if we wanted to make this PS Core specific. Uh, and then say, I think it's credential. Yeah, credential. And then the username and password for the basic authentication would be as part of the credential object. And then what it what it does is it creates this header is what it does. Um, cool. Okay, so that was significantly easier than I expected. Uh, okay, so I think... Oh, since I'm working in the PowerShell Core, yeah, that's great. Because I did, I did want this to be PowerShell Core compatible because I was. Uh, so here's the change. So I was doing some work in an Azure function with PowerShell. I've heard about that at the summit, and I thought it'd be cool to make a function, an Azure function that will take accept a curl command and then spit back a uh, uh, the invoke rest method syntax. So I might be trying that out uh, once this is all the way working. Let's see, convert to IRM, curl command. Okay, this was, let's see, mouse boards, switch parameters. Uh, what was that? Without uh, values, switch parameter. Of course, I had to explain what a switch parameter was. Uh, you're going to use the auto. Yes, that is. So <laughs> it's really funny that you mentioned that. So one of the, one of the things with like doing something like curl two PS, uh, is, whoop, yep. Uh, which ones isn't saved? Oh, that doesn't matter. Uh, so one of the things with doing this, this module like curl two PS is that, uh, why work on this when you've got auto rest? Well, uh, auto, I, so I, I'm not super familiar with auto rest. I sat in um, Adam Murray's uh, session on it. It was really freaking awesome. Um, and it's definitely something I'm going to be looking at in the future because I've done several modules that work around APIs. 
but the way I see it is, I don't know, for now, maybe, maybe long term, there may not, I, 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 don't, I don't know all of Autorest's capabilities with an API, but there may be like edge cases where there's something really complicated the API needs done instead of just a simple get, set, or that sort of thing. I don't know. I just, in my experience, the the APIs I worked with are all very different, unfortunately. And, you know, maybe long term, they all just are going to be standardized. I don't know. I don't, I don't really have too much of an opinion other than Autorest is freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. I think if I, okay, so I did get the... Um, did it get the commit? I think it should. Yes. Okay, sweet. I did actually, that reference did catch. Okay, cool. I was hoping it would. And, ooh, it looks like, I'm, I'm looking over at my um, my OBS uh, stream, and you can actually see through my shoulder here. <laughs> Let's get, we maybe crack up a few times. Um, okay, uh, what was the next issue that I wanted to look, look at? Oh, so... One of the really interesting things that I got actually several comments on, including one from uh, the venerable Lee Holmes, was that outputting a string uh, expression is maybe not such a great idea, which makes sense. And so one of the things he suggested was instead of outputting, so if you look down, down, uh, down here, uh, the output of convert to IRM is literally a string version of invoke rest method. And instead of outputting uh, this nicely nice looking command, uh, it, by default it should, uh, well, and this is, I'm obviously open to other opinions here, uh, but maybe it should output a splat instead, so a hash table of the parameters. I thought, ooh, that is an interesting idea. So what I'm thinking is on the class. So my curl command class. So right now, it let's uh oh let's actually get this all the way over so it makes sense here. Uh, let's see. So two string two iron. Okay. So so by default the convert to IRM command outputs the dot to IRM method of this curl command class. So what that means is that by default right now, it, uh, it outputs, you know, what, what you see down here, this invoke rest method syntax. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm thinking is, and actually what I'm just going to go ahead and do is add a hash table output um, to IRM splat and have it output that by default. Hmm. Ooh, except, well, it's, is it gonna, uh, so when I'm, hmm, so the reason I just paused <laughs> is because most of the, most of the output or most of the code in to IRM method body length oh yeah okay never mind so what I was thinking is I was gonna have to do all the parsing all over again inside of two IR or two IRM splat but I forgot uh, that I've done all the parsing in the constructor which is great because uh, <laughs> uh, then I only have to do the construction or sorry get all the parameters once Oh, just got an email. Instead of having to do it twice, and it's when it would be the same on both at both times. So that's great. Actually, this is going to be it's going to be really easy again. Well, hmm. I just knocked on my uh, wooden well uh, faux wooden desk. Uh, okay, so two IRM. Why does it not like that? Not all code version. Oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so instead of having this out string plus equals, we're going to do, let's see, 
create a hash table, then out uh, URI equals this dot URL dot to string and then method this dot method equals this dot oh, this dot method uh, let's see method so and then if uh, this dot body length is greater than zero actually you know what the heck copy paste for the win uh, so we're gonna say out body equals this dot body because it does not guarantee to have a body which is why I do the if this dot body if this dot headers dot keys let's do the same again we're gonna get rid of this commented line because who needs that out headers equals uh, and so I've got I've got this helper command called converts to ht string. This takes a hash table. Right now it's, it's a depth of one hash table, so not a very complicated hash table, and converts it to the string notation in PowerShell. So essentially to the uh, you know the at value equals key, and it, and it works. It well it works it works good for now, um, and that's what you see down here. This at that's what the convert to ht string does. It's all right. That's what I wrote in uh, Panic right before the uh, Lightning demo because I found a bug. Uh, okay. Uh, so then we're returning out. Okay, sweet. Why is that underlined? R is an alias in folk history. No, it's not. Or, I mean, R is, but it's got a whole big man. Okay. So I'm, I'm fairly certain with... Uh, with PowerShell core, we can reload the class on the fly. But it's just hanging out here, not doing anything. Hmm. We'll try that again. Okay, yeah, console died. Okay. Well, I guess we're we're reloading the we're reloading the console anyway, so it doesn't matter. Oh, really? Okay, now it doesn't even want to doesn't want to run the run the uh, file. Come on. Oh, I guess the URL isn't in there. Okay, now I'm hitting F5 and it's not doing anything. Great. Okay. We'll go F8. It'll just select all. That's okay. Okay, so now we should be able to say is the curl command new and then put the curl string in there. And oh, yep, yeah, yeah, I need to assign that to a variable. All right, so now we can say cc.2. Oh, I forgot what I called it. IRM splat. Yeah. Sweet. That actually, well, yeah. Um, huh. Sweet. Except it doesn't have all the headers. We I thought we just fixed that problem. <sighs> hmm. Convert to IRM. Oh, that's uh, yeah, that's not that's not loaded right now. Headers equals this dot headers. So headers equals. So we should have gotten. This dot headers. I've oh, got that funny little string in there. Hmm. So that should have worked. Let's let's uh, let's build the module and actually 
Oh, I wanted to switch this to give this actually a switch switch parameter and say uh, what's a good switch parameter name? Uh, this is going to be the actual the uh, outputting the entire command string. Maybe just command string. String. Woo. Uh, okay, so then we can say if string dot is present. Otherwise, we'll do curl command dot to IRM. Excuse me, splat. Okay, and then we'll do a mock build on that. And then re import the module, build curl to PS. Okay. And so with that, with that module, updated module here, RM string. Oh, well, it's not a string anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's do a string. Dang it. <laughs> it's not getting the, uh, it's not working anymore. <laughs> okay, so we got an accept. Oh. What? Oh, it's because the other <laughs> header is up here. It's a basic header and it's, okay. So the, this, other header up here, sorry, this other string up here has the actual um, basic auth header, which doesn't work by the way, just to be clear in case you're wondering why I've got my credentials just hanging out. Uh, okay, so that should, so somehow I remove those from there, all right. Uh, okay, so this should actually do what I expect it to, which is to have there you go. You notice the mm, I'm blocking a little bit of it. Uh, you notice here that the uh, the authorization is included now, which it wasn't before. Um, but and if we run this, the, or sorry, if we run uh, just the class and we do that to IRM splat, we now get that accept and authorization. Nice. Sweet, dude, we are flying. <laughs> I did not. Ex I expected to get bogged down by that regular expression, to be honest. Okay. So the question is, does it work? Uh, let's see. So if we did invoke. Rest method. Can we just do this like this? I, I don't know if this will actually work. No, okay, did not expect that. Okay, uh, okay, so we can get a splat equals cc dot two irm splat, and say invoke rest method splat, and this should actually come back and say user with this token is not found. Yep, there we go. Well, that's good. You know, like I said, the credentials weren't any good anyway. Okay, uh, so let's get that uh, committed. Uh, okay, uh, what else did we add down here? Oh, yeah, two IRM splat. Now defaults to outputting a hash table. And this is number 15. Oh, I don't know why I didn't assign myself. It's probably a little intimidated by the regular expression. Uh, okay. I said 15, right? Is that assigned to me? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, issue 15. Don't need a scratch of the presentation. Now defaults to outputting a hash table. Nice. 
All right. We are not running out of issues, though. Uh, so, anyone got any opinions on making this V6 compatible versus adding support for multi-line strings? I don't know if anyone's paying much attention right now. I'll give you guys a second while I get a drink of water. Do the DevOps. I'm not sure which one that is. I mean, one could argue that most of this is DevOps. I don't know. CI is... Oh! Oh! You mean, like, get it set up so that it, uh... Ah, sure. Why not? Let's do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's do that. I like that. I was just working... I just got CI CD set up on another one of my modules yesterday. So, okay, so first... Um... I've, so before we do that, let's make sure my tests are actually any good. <laughs> so these tests are um, no, I'm 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 open to suggestions. So I mean, it's either that or what were the other options? Uh, document. Ooh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> Support V6. Uh, it already does, but uh, V6 specific parameters. Meh, doesn't need that. I mean, it would be nice. But, I mean, same thing for multi-line strings. So, heck, let's just do this. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Uh, okay, so let's live life on the edge and get pester installed for PowerShell v6. Install module pester. So when I saw that Azure Functions only works in PowerShell Core, that was like the moment when I was like, I need to learn PowerShell, or I need to be all PowerShell Core. I need to make all my modules PowerShell Core. Uh, tester. I think this will work just right like that. Oh, it's a splat. So I am just going to suck it up and convert to HT string is not recognized as the name of the command that a function script file or operable program. Is this in module scope? Or which one is was that to test in? Curl command methods. Uh, pardon me while I uh, do some testing for test cases. Uh, correct URL. Well, I just do some quick debugging on the tests. Uh, okay, curl command constructors. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have seen, um, Safane has got a PS class utils, I think is what his module is called, that automatically generate these tests based on a class that you give it. Uh, I mean, they need some testing, or sorry, need some, uh, need to be added to, let's see, to IRM should not throw. Curl command to, should not throw. Okay, new... I think this needs in scope. This is in module scope. What? Okay, that was that surprised me. It already had the in module scope. Um, so what it's what it's complaining is these convert to ht string is not a known method. But it is a private function. And it should be, let's make sure that's even in here. And it is is in there. Hmm. Less directly, we are in module scope. Oof. Anybody got any ideas? Should not throw. Instance equals curl new instance dot convert to IRM. 
Let's see, where is this? Wow. Um, in module scope, it is described. Wow, I'm uh, I'm drawing a blank here, on why. Let's see. Compared to HG strings, not working as near the command line. So, um, to return type string, so that's, yeah, that's, that's accurate. Um, anybody you've got, well, 4.8, yeah. Anybody watching got any ideas? So it's failing on a private function Maybe that is the issue. Sorry, my phone just went off. Let me just throw it on the floor first. Um, okay, nothing immediately important. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe a class in a module can't access a private function. Let's test that theory. Okay, so let's make a new cc.2 string. Okay, it works here. But it doesn't work. Hmm. Uh, let's try, let's 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 just try something crazy. So now if we invoke pester, that still fails. Okay, that did not make any different what difference whatsoever. Okay, am I actually looking at the right? Describing, let's see, core command tests, yeah. Hmm. All right, well, we've got a, either I'm screwing something up or there's something going on in Pester, but I would, be more inclined to believe that uh, something I did is screwing up uh, because yeah, I'm just uh, public method string should not throw. Hmm. Anyone else that just tuned in? Uh, I've got a. Uh, uh, doing a pester test on a class of my curl command or method of my curl command class uh, that calls a private function and inside of the pester test it fails because it cannot find that private function um, even though it is running in module scope uh, and the module name is Correct. Uh, I mean, is, the, is it case sensitive? I don't think. I mean, yeah, that looks good. Oops. I'm just pulling crazy things out here. That still didn't work. Hmm. Seven. That's referring. All right, let's actually. I'm gonna pull up that class again. Yeah, yeah, it's got that in there, and it works everywhere else except in the pastor test. Man, that is annoying. Okay, so what we can do is we can. I think we can still do the CI/CD without those tests needing to pass. So we're gonna. Oh, we're going to actually roll back those changes. Yeah, because we, we didn't actually do anything useful there. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's um, look at a pipeline setup. Uh, it's, oh, maybe I already have one. 
Uh, I do. All right. Uh, but no, I haven't built any builds yet. Um, I didn't remember doing this. Actually, I do remember doing this. It was right before the lightning demo. And by right before, I mean like while I was still here at my office. Um, and, and then I found all the bugs and I was like, oh crap, I just want it to work. I don't need to necessarily publish it. Uh, okay. Um, so I don't have my, uh, my oh, PowerShell gallery module, key, PowerShell gallery key in there yet. That's okay. Not really gonna see if we can have, okay, we're going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to, that's going to bug me, so I'm just going to ignore it for right now. Uh, what I want to do is I want to check and make sure the build has a deploy task or a publish task. It does, but I don't have my, my deploy file. So what we're going to do is look at another module that does. Um, uh, because I believe so. PS Deploy uses. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. We're going to actually just copy this. Uh, so module dot PS Deploy. New file module dot PS Deploy dot PS One. We're gonna paste this in here. See PS Gallery. So build slash curl to PS. 2ps gallery, and then uh, I set an environmental variable inside of the pipeline uh, to actually grab the API key. Uh, so then in the build, all oh, module build publish, uh, test, invoke PS, or yeah, test, yeah, pass or test pass, which is tests. Yep, that looks good. Okay. Let's see, module path, that looks good. And I'm still in the right repository. Uh, this is a, uh, this is like my boilerplate build. Uh, it doesn't really do anything special. Um, I just gotta add a few variables. I mean, I've, I've, already, I've already edited this, obviously. Uh, so then we call that build.ps1, which is this file. Uh, so this file, uh, it has a parameter that takes the task, and by default, it will just build the module. Uh, and so the dependent modules, ps deploy, invoke build, body ps, and pester. Um, what's interesting is I had an issue yesterday with another module where uh, the version of pester in the pipeline was not high enough, so I actually had to specify a certain version number. We'll see if we get that same error here, but and we'll still get these two errors, but it should still publish, I think, which is bad <laughs> because it shouldn't. Um, but that's a task for another time. So let's get this uh, get this rolling. Uh, and I, I am going to leave the version at 0 .0, 0.0.0.1. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. Uh, just because uh, I've, I've defined version 1.0 to be... Uh, when these, uh, when it, when the documentation gets finished, um, and then there's a, these other tasks. Well, I have actually fixed these um, 14 and 15. I just need to actually close them when we do the uh, the PR. Uh, but before I do the PR, we can actually do. Uh, whoop, I'm not gonna save it yet. So we're gonna do an environmental variable. I'm gonna add my uh, PS gallery key. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this on the other screen for a minute while I do that. I'd rather not have you guys all publishing uh, modules with my API key. Um, I not that I have all that many modules published. I think I've got like 200 total downloads or something. I mean, it's something I'm proud of, but it's not not a whole lot. There we go. Here, just a yeah, 217. Woo! 
Uh, okay, sorry. Um, let me API keys. Azure DevOps. Oh. Uh, I forgot that um, once once you uh, generate your API key, you can look at it once. That's it. So we, I'm gonna here. If you guys want to, um, yeah, I can actually, I can actually show you guys this because I can't see my. Uh, so I'm in the PowerShell gallery for you, someone who hasn't been there before. This is what it looks like once you log in and go to your um, API keys here. Um, and so you can see that I've got uh, I've got two API keys currently. I've got my root key, uh, and then I've got my Azure DevOps key, which is what I'm using in Azure DevOps. Um, that was in hindsight, that was probably a pretty poor choice of just calling it a general Azure DevOps because I don't have access to it anymore. And I've got another module I'd like to publish from Azure DevOps. Uh, but you notice that I've only given this key permission to push new packages and package versions. That's uh, really important because you don't want to be able to unlist packages with that in case it's compromised. I mean, yeah, someone taking it and publishing, um, uh, publishing modules with your key, not good. Uh, so I'm just going to actually I'm gonna create a module specific. Uh, yeah, 365 days as far as we can go. So push new packages and package versions. Select which package um, blob pattern. I was going to literally just call it curl to PS. Uh, and none of the other packages. Okay. So um, I'm not sure when it actually displays it. So I'm going to pull over here and hit create. Oh, okay, sweet. Here. So this is what it looks like after you hit create. Sorry, I didn't want to display this live. Um, well, I could just delete it. So it's really not that big a deal. Um, uh, but here I'm assuming that I've just hit copy. And it was copied. And then back into the pipeline. So for the environmental variables, I'm going to paste it here. Uh, as my PS gallery key, and you'll notice um, in my uh, deploy uh, file here, I'm accessing it with just the standard environmental variable uh, in PowerShell, since I'm adding it as an environmental variable. So I'm going to paste this in here, and I'm going to, sorry, I've got this off screen while I, I save it. Okay. So I've got it in there, i got it saved, so it's going to do the build, publish, PowerShell script. Um, Sweet. So this should, this is a really simple um, uh, build task for a module. Um, when I do, when I get the tests all figured out, uh, you can uh, uh, do um, a test sequence and then get some reports on that, which are great. Um, I saw how Fred, Frederick, um, I always forget his last name, um, he was at the Summit, did a little side session on, on his builds, which are actually simple, but more complex than mine. Um, okay. Uh, so I don't want to queue this up because I don't have uh, I don't have anything set up yet. But if we go to triggers and do uh, CI continuous integration, then branch filters just include the master. And then what that'll do is automatically kick off the build when there's a PR or a commit to the master branch. Hmm. We could add a path filter. I'm gonna. I'm gonna skip that actually. Um, let's get, get rid of that. Oh, maybe this is making me think that maybe I should have a release branch instead of a master and a master branch. Uh, anyway, this is why you don't commit straight to your master branch if you've got CI/CD set up. Okay, uh, we can get rid of that. Uh, and so what I'm gonna do here is. Um, Oh, something else for anyone that hasn't done this kind of work before with GitHub. Uh, under settings, just really quick, um, I've got branch protection set up. Uh, so if you go to uh, settings in GitHub branches, uh, branch protection rules, you can add a rule. Uh, but essentially what I've got here is just saying that I've got to do a PR review uh, before I can commit to the master branch. Or sorry, merge to the master branch. And then of course require review and include myself. So. Uh, so let me show you what this looks like. Actually, looks like so. We're gonna do a compare to a pull request. 
and we only have one commit. Uh huh. Let me. Oh, let me. Um, I gotta actually commit the deploy <laughs> and then push those two changes. Uh, so here I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna. Uh, resolves 14 and 15, as well as adds the deploy settings. Okay, so we should, and what this will do is this will pick up all of the commits. So even if I create the PR before, uh, you can see I only saw one commit there. I've actually got three of them now. Um, oh, I may not be able to merge this myself. <laughs> I might have messed up those settings. Uh, okay, so we've got, uh, whoops. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to, since I'm the only, um, the only administrator on this branch, what I need to do is in the branch protection rule, Require reviews. Um, enforce all computer restrictions. I do want to enforce it even on myself, but I thought I could actually. Well, I've got two PRs. Oh, sweet! Check that out. Ah, that's awesome. I got someone else submitted a PR. Let's uh, let's check this out. You don't have a dash in the header name. Ah. Sweet, dude. Let's uh, let's do a code review. Let's see what Wesley's up to here. Yeah, seriously. Nah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, that looks great. Cool. Yeah, he mentioned he was gonna have a PR. Well, let's. Uh, that's great. That's awesome. String fix. Cool. Uh, wow. You guys can see me get my first PR live on stream. Feels pretty good. Uh, so let's um, let's say thank you, Wesley. This is awesome. Awesome. So we are going to uh, comment. And say merge pull request. Fix quotes. Yes. Sweet. Oh, uh, merge into the dev branch. That's important. So then let's uh, let's get that into. Um, okay, so now merged. Nice. Okay, so this should actually. I I think this will pick up. Yes, it did. Oh, so he was working on it the same time I was. Nice. Okay, so I can't approve this. So let's, <laughs> this is kind of funny. So maybe I need multiple administrators to actually do the enforced administrators. Require review. I want to enforce restrictions on myself, but I don't have, uh, well, not issues, pull requests. Ah, there we go. Okay, you can, as an administrator, you may still merge. Okay, that's what I was expecting to see. Uh, so I guess review it. That's fine. Uh, let's let's take a look here. Oh, I'm I don't have to view my own own. Um, oh, here we go. I want to actually see the oh, see the changes. Sorry, I always I always review my own PRs <laughs> just because. Um, uh, let's see, yeah, command the binding, add a string switch. Uh, yeah, call me crazy, but I always like to review, review the changes just to make sure that, you know, something else didn't squeak in, squeak in there, or I didn't, uh, screw up on something. It looks good. Oh. I'm doing an actual formal code review on GitHub. I haven't done this before. I gotta remember to do that, to actually commit that, or put the comments on there. Uh, looks good. Uh, 
I have to admit, I don't know what LGTM stands for. Looks good to me. Is that what LGTM is? Looks good to me. Okay. Okay. Cool. And you know what else I really like about... Oh. Okay. Well, what I was going to say, something else um, I like about GitHub is that you can... Uh... Oh, LGTM. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh... Uh, something else I like about GitHub is you can usually use emojis as well. It couldn't there, and I don't, doesn't look like I can here. Okay, so we are going to, merging is blocked. I reviewed it. We're going to merge pull requests. So, use your administrator privileges. Okay. Um, uh, what I'm going to do is close this number 14 and number 15 and add their fixes. Header problem at Wesley. Oh, I can't tag him here. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. We're going to confirm that merge. Okay, so now merge from into master from dev. Okay, so now what we should see is just now we should see a build kickoff over here ah yeah there we go there we go okay wait oh merge from okay sorry i thought it was kicking off on my master or dirt blah, 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 dev branch okay uh do a check out i know this isn't very exciting to watch but I like uh, watching my baby go through the pipeline. Okay, I and mean, it's taking a long time to do a checkout. <laughs> but what's really cool now, let's check this out. Two contributors. That's what I'm excited about. Okay, this is going really slow. Um, oh, uh, while I'm waiting, I'm actually going to go ahead and close. Wait, where did... F oh, did 14 automatically get closed? Okay, how did that happen? Oh, but it only closed... It only closed 14. Okay, I'll have to learn a little more about how um, GitHub deals with that, but this should also be closed. Default outputting to a splat. Um, let's see what. Okay, uh, this was closed by 19. Close and comment. There we go. All right, so the cool thing. Well, let's check and see what this is doing. Oh. Oh yeah, the oh oh the publish failed. Module can be published missing required metadata. Verify that the module manifest specifies description and author. Oh, I thought it did. Oh, that is the wrong repository. Yes, here we go. Okay. Oh, build PSD one. Oh, it doesn't specify a description. Uh, let's see, and I don't do the description in here, so let's just add it into here. Um, and just for the sake of uh, documentation, uh, let's see, manifest missing description. And that does not need any more information. <laughs> That is pretty obvious. Oh, more people. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna sign myself here. Call a bug. Definitely something. Definitely a bug. 
else on projects. We'll add this to the V1 project just because that needs to be fixed for V1. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Uh, and then let's go ahead and add a company name. Hmm. Okay, that looks good. Company name, we'll just leave that. Actually, I see a lot of people do community. I always, I always wonder if I should put uh, Anthony Howell as the author or the Posh Wolf, because they both sound good. Okay, so this is, um, let's see, we're merging, we're oh, file encoding. You guys wanna see a problem with file encoding? Right there, bam. Uh, okay, but it's the right encoding now. That's, that's something when I copy paste files that happens sometimes. Uh, okay, added a description. And this is what? Number 20. Number 20. Oh, let's sync those changes. Probably should have done that before I. Uh, Made that commit. Oh well. Okay, looks good. Not that. Okay. Okay. So now we should. Uh, build curl ps. Okay. Never mind. Invoke build. Build aborted. Missing task. Dot binding build. Whoa. Okay. Well, that was. Uh, that was not the right file. <laughs> That's what I needed to do. Okay, build succeeded. That looks good. Um, what? Oh, adding that to the build. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Uh, build description. Okay, bam. We'll push that up. We'll do another. Uh, that should actually get referenced. Manifest missing description. Nice. Okay, so then let's just do a quick PR. Where's my dead branch? Your branch is 24 seconds ago. New PR. Branch master. Okay, looks good, looks good. Binary file. That is not true. Okay. Um, why does it think there's a binary file? Hmm. Uh, adding, adding a description to the manifest. Okay. That's, let's see, review required, merging is blocked, okay. Uh, I think I can just do, uh, well, let's do another code review. Uh, with checks, no, sorry, that was not where I wanted to go. All right, all right. Um, all right, there you go, you know, using your uh, LGTM. Submit review. Yeah, the reason I'm do I'm doing all this issues and um, oh user administrator put it is uh, and code reviews and stuff is because it shows up down here. No, does it? I think it does. Um, I thought it did. Request a code review. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh well, if it doesn't. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Eventually, um, so when I, you know when I'm looking uh, looking for work, I I always send potential clients my link to my GitHub repo. Want to see what I do? That's the best way to find it. Oh, okay. So the oh, we should be getting another build. Should be getting another build. Nice in progress. Okay. Um, Mm, 
I was just thinking that the documentation needs to be updated too. Uh, but the problem is that I don't need it to kick off on a documentation update. Well, specifically the README for GitHub. So I got an idea. Uh, so this one is um, the one that's on CI. So we can uh, exclude. I think this will work. Um, I'm just not sure what the syntax is. Is it just kind of say readme.markdown? I'm not sure if it needs a dot slash or something, but I'm, I'm going to save that without queuing it. And then we're going to edit the readme markdown file and task publish. This looks great. Well, I won't, I won't get too excited yet. Uh, while I am waiting for that, let's, let's just update the readme really quick and see what happens there. Um, actually, and I'm going to switch to the master branch. Let's actually sync some changes there from the master branch. Okay, that looks a lot better. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, now that is interesting. You guys remember the passer test didn't work before? They worked here. <laughs> I wonder, ah, uh, you know what? It's probably because uh, this is probably running Windows PowerShell and I'm running locally on PowerShell 6.2. I'll do a little more testing on that, but I think that's what's going on. Okay, so now I should see an additional package. Seven packages. Nice, girl 2 ps yeah. 0 .0 0 0.0.1. All right. Maybe I should have called it like alpha or beta or something, but we'll just leave it like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so let's update. I say okay a lot, don't I? Uh, let's update this readme. Uh, what is a utility module to help convert core commands? My keyboard's probably really loud, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get this rid of this goal. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've got one function, right? Public convert to get curl command. What is get curl command? Oh, it outputs a class. Yeah, that's good to mention. Sorry, my phone's ringing a goon. I'll call them back. Nothing important this time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, let me let me just. Sorry, sorry, guys. Got to pause for just a second. I can definitely can wait on that. Uh, okay, so for this um, conversion, let's curl string. Oh, try to F8 in a markdown file. That was not smart. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. it's Control C, Control V, and then Control C, and then Control V. 
So by default, it's going to output headers. That looks good. We prefer a string command. Actually, we'll do an example where we actually say splat equals. We don't need all that. Uh, invoke rest method. Oh, method. Method. Or if you prefer the screen command. Let's see. Oh, you know, something else I learned in my blog is that um, whatever this tag is called right here to tell it, tell Markdown what a language you're using, that's case sensitive. Should all be lowercase. Uh, okay. Actually, I'm going to fix this one too. Uh, and so the string command is going to be the same. And that's going to get this beautiful output. Okay, uh, or another example. Sorry, guys, as soon as I finish uh, typing this out, oh, it doesn't have that parameter anymore. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to commit this, and I want to see if that uh, that CI pipeline uh, won't key off of this readme.markdown. Uh, let's see. Where am I going? Public for DRM. Oh, I called it curl command, not curl string. Okay. Go. Okay. 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 So uh, let's. Uh, I want to. I want to check one other thing. And so in the build, you know, I never. Did, I don't think I ever saved that in. Uh, or sorry, in the pipeline. Uh, this guy should there we go, edit uh, triggers uh, in case it's case sensitive. I'm going to switch that to be all caps. Okay, so big test. So if that exclude works, we should be able to. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Oh, you know what? I always forget. I, well, I shouldn't say I always forget. I usually do this. With Markdown, is actually uh, do the preview. Uh, in fact, I don't know if you guys have ever tried writing Markdown in VS Code with the preview open. That's even more fun. <laughs> oh, something I should add. To install the module. Okay, we're going to do uh, actually have the install module. And a reference to the contributing. <laughs> if you find a curl command. Do I have a contributing? Oh, I don't. Well, put that on my list to add a contributing uh, file. Okay, so if you, that's great. Oh, excuse me. PRs, welcome. There we go. Okay. So what should happen once we 
Well, I don't know if this is what should happen. What I hope happens is once we push this to the source, I'm just waiting for this little icon down here to finish spinning. There we go. Hopefully, we get that 55 commits. There we go. And hopefully, a build did not kick off. I'm going to give it a second or maybe a minute to make sure that it really isn't going to. Uh, going to go here. Oh, okay, there we go. That's sweet. Okay, so that's that's how the uh, for anyone that was watching or maybe just jumped on, that's how the exclude path filter works. I excluded the readme for builds because don't need that. That changes, but we should still be able to install the model. Yes, use the examples. Or another example. And this example is actually broken <laughs> because it doesn't include this. Okay, um, let's actually add that as an issue. Manifest missing description. I fixed that one though, didn't I? I yeah, I did. I did actually. Yeah. Uh, where's that close PR? I do a lot of PRs. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but that's just how this works, I guess. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Closed by PR21. There we go. Okay. Nice. But what's also pretty cool, I don't know if any of you guys use GitHub for this, but you've got, you can have projects. So like I've got my V1 project is what I'm calling it. And I've got all my tasks here. So there's the ones that are done. Um, automated as in progress. I wonder what that automation means. Move issues here when reopened. Approve pending approval. Yeah, I'm not, not sure, but just use the built-in automation. Uh, but there you go. You got the um, add support for multi-line strings. Oh, and the new issue that I was just thinking, where is it? Because, but I haven't added it. Uh, Fix uh, URL. Um, what are those called after the end of the URL? Um, are they URL parameters? I'm gonna call them for URL parameters. Which was missing. Where is from call missing after? Uh, oh, check this out here. So this is awesome. So in my issue template, I wanted to add support. Well, I wanted to specifically get people to submit the curl commands that aren't working. Um, so this is actually the one I'm going to use. Bam. Oh, no, I just wanted the curl command, not the rest of it. Okay. So I'm going to lead by example here. Here's the curl command. Okay. In the example curl command, the URL has parameters that are not returned. Oop, let's hit save there. Didn't want to do that. Uh, let's see. I'm just so used to hitting Control S. Uh, let's see. You've described my bug. Tell us what. Okay. Nope. Expected current. Um. Wow. I asked for way too much information here. I'm gonna fix <laughs> fix this. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna fix my issue template. Uh, PS version table. Um. Cause I don't need that. All that PS version table. Get module curl to PS. And since the uh, version is 0 0.001, we'll go ahead and. Uh, yeah, wow. Okay, note to self 
copying other people's issue templates is not always a good thing. Um, here, and I always like to preview it. Okay, cool, that's good. Command. What is that? Why is that bold? Okay, all right, let's submit that as an issue. Bam, okay. Okay, sweet. Uh, let's see the project. I know this isn't this isn't quite all that uh, exciting. Yeah, this is a bug. Okay, uh, and that's gonna be a lot of regjects. Uh, I'll go ahead and sign myself actually. And which other one? The support. Yeah, I know what this needs to happen here. Add support from the strings. Okay, so what we're gonna do. Is this on myself here? <coughs> uh, so support for multi-line strings. So this is a mm, this is a, going to be a difficult one. No, it's not. I lied. Um, <laughs> here's why. Uh, so curl command. Uh, so. If you have a multi-line string to PowerShell, uh, let's here, open up my scratch. <clears throat> like this. You should be able to say, you should be able to split on I think it's yeah. Mm, um, There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you've got the, so there's two characters you don't see at the end of a line, on a line break. Or did it actually work? Hold on a second. No, it didn't actually work. Is it just dash R? I think it's just dash R. Four. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. No, that didn't work like I thought it would. Okay. Uh, why? Oh, oh, oh. This is strange. I'm not sure why this. Oh, there we go. Hold on a second. Uh, what is quick? Somebody know the index ten <laughs> char character? Um. Uh, so let's do uh, in regular expression. What's the what's the line break? Tab feed, line feed, carriage return. Oh, it's an N. Okay, so that actually might be what I'm missing. On my split In fact, I think that is okay, okay, okay. So on Windows, uh, in a a multi-line string like in a file, for example, they have two characters at the end. The and I'm not an expert on this, so I I'm sorry if this is a really oversimplification, this is how I understand it. So they have the 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 carriage return and the line feed. And so we need to split the string based on that. So what we can do is when we get the get a multi-line string, we can actually just run a match on uh, uh, okay. So it is a return and then a line feed. Okay, uh, we can run a match on um, what's this character right before the R called? The escape character in PowerShell. I forget. Uh, we can we can just we can match it like this, and if that's true, um, then we can join all the string, join all the lines, and remove <clears throat> remove backtick. Thank you, thank you. I don't know why that was just not in my head this morning. Uh, okay, so what we can do is.
if string. Okay, so we can say if curl string match. Uh, let's see, backtick r, backtick n. Uh, thanks again for that. Um, we can do a r equals curl string split. Why is that auto completing? So we'll split, and then we will be able to say our um, so what, what, what I want to do is I want to trim the back tick and then join them. So we can do that like this for each object underscore dot. I think there's a trim right. Oh, okay, that's why autocomplete is not working. My my PowerShell terminal just dumped. Okay, uh, so if we got a string, we should we should have a string dot trim. Oh, it's trim end and start. It's not trim right. Okay, trim end. And we'll do a space backtick or backtick backslash. But the thing that I'm just I'm I'm just thinking now. I'm not sure about is. Does there have to be a space before it? That's, that's a bash thing, right? Not sure if they're if in bash, if the last character can just be a backslash. Let's let let's do this. Instead of trim end, we'll do a trim end. We'll do a back tick, and then we'll do a trim. And on a space. No, we okay. We don't actually want to trim the space because we want the space so we can join them back and they'll still be spaced. Okay, I'm just okay. Well, that that that's better. So for each object, we'll trim it, and then we'll get an array, and we'll join that array, and then curl string should now equal that. I think it should work. Or join. So we could trim the space and then join it with the space. And that way we know there is a space. Actually, we're going to do that. Because just in case there's not a space, because I don't know if there is or not. Trim in space, and then we'll join them with a space. OK. Let's, let's test the sucker out. Oh, guy, the URL class. Okay. Uh, so if we got curl command new, and then we are going to grab. Oh, actually, I should already have this in here. Or did I put it in the scratch? Yeah, I'll put it in the scratch. Okay, cool. So curl command. Ah, yeah, that looks right. I'm just closing closing issues left and right today. Uh, I did not expect that one to be that quite that uh, that easy. Okay, so uh, oh, and we'll actually ah uh, no, we're not going to build that in yet. Uh, so what we'll do is sports multi line strings. And then that is number three. Oh, that's an old issue. Well, relatively speaking. OK. And we're just going to commit the curl command, which is the class. Yeah, that looks. Oh, I just. Crap. I just committed that to master. Uh, but it was just these lines. Um. Quick, does somebody know how to undo a, uh, a git commit? Um, <laughs> it's a common search to undo. Uh, Given a few major options. Okay, let's see what this guy has to say. 
get reset. In case you want to undo the commit and change nothing more, use make a few changes to your latest command or fix your commit message. Leaves working tree as it was before reset. Okay, so let's try that. Oh, let's see. Get reset. Interesting. Uh, well, what do you know? That was awesome. Okay. Er, what am I doing? <laughs> we're gonna unstage that, and we're gonna switch to dev branch. I almost committed it right back. Okay, now that we're in dev, uh, let's make that change and make sure that it's still there. Yep. Is that too long? Oh, three characters. Okay, we'll get that in there. Looks good. Okay, cool. And oh, self assign that. Okay, well, actually, one was going to push that up. To the dev branch. Uh, okay. Oh, what's the other issues I want to take a look at? Document. That is not going to be exciting. I'll wait on that. <laughs> uh, okay. So so PS string scanner. That's one that Stefane recommended. I haven't used it before. It's probably going to take a long, little bit to dig into. Uh, so I'm going to skip that for right now. Um, PowerShell v6. So, in PowerShell v6, the invoke rest method commandlet has several additions. Several by additions is what I meant to say. Um, I'm just trying to find the best way. Let's. Uh, Yeah, there he is. He's got a blog post on it. There it is. I was I forgot what his blog was called. Uh, convert JS to pipelines. Oh, I thought he. Mm, I thought he had actually had a post on the differences, or maybe let's take a look at the roadmap one. Okay. Because uh, I know there is at least the authentication changes, uh, which means so. So if you're using like a uh, a header for the bearer token, uh, it, you can just uh, let me show you. So in actually, let's let's do it in the scratch. So we get some highlighting. So in invoke rest method. Oh, come on, come on. There we go. We now, and this is PowerShell, uh, PowerShell 6.2. Uh, we now have an authentication parameter, whereas in Windows PowerShell, we don't. Uh, and so what that means is that when we have a basic authentication issue like on this URL. So this is basic authentication, just as an example. And yeah, it's at least using HTTPS with basic. <laughs> um, uh, we can specify the authentication of basic and then give it a credential. Uh, and we can we can use instead of and we and then the commandlet itself will generate the header, uh, the header for that um, that authentication method. So if it's got a bearer token, for instance, the header needs the authorization header to equal to bearer space your token. Now if it's basic, then it takes the first and last name and does and encodes them and then adds it basic space and then that block of text. Um, and so previously you had to know how to encode that uh, 
for the invoke rest method commandlet. So in versions 5.1, I don't know how far back that goes, uh, but 5.1 for sure. Uh, and then, and so now you can actually um, add it in as the authentication and credential parameters. But I'm not actually sure how it works. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get much make much headway on this one because I'm not sure how it works um, with. Sorry, I'll zoom that in. Uh, I'm not sure how that works with, uh, say, a bearer token. What does the um, credential need to be? Um, so we get credential method post. Like I'm looking at this, I couldn't tell you what kind of authentication it's doing. Is it defaulting to basic? Post on internet website. Oh, okay. It's um, it's an intranet, so oh, not actually sure. Um, oh, and then oh, and then there's other ones like maximum uh, rel links or following those relative links. Uh, Multi-part data form submission. Oof. Or form data submission. Sorry. Oof. I don't know what that looks like in curl, but. I mean, it'd be cool if this uh, this could support it. Yeah, multiple headers. Yeah, I'll do that one. Okay, so let's Okay. Oh. Requires oh, yep, I just answered that question. So if you use bearer with invoke rest method, it requires the dash token parameter. Nice. I did not know that that was uh that was there. Okay, an OAuth and bear. Okay, that makes sense. They're the same thing. Uh, let's see. So base64, user password. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. None. So how do we make this uh, curl to ps module support that? So what I was thinking is adding in a flag for, I don't know, maybe dash v6? I don't know, dash core? Uh, not sure. Um or maybe it defaults to that because people should be using PowerShell Core, right? We all are, all the time. Most of the time. I wouldn't say all the time. Well, huh, huh, I wouldn't even say most of the time for me. I'm getting there. Uh, but I don't, I, that, I don't think that's something I can knock out in 20 minutes. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, so... So we can at least add basic. So maybe. So what, what I'm thinking here is how do I want to define what version of PowerShell it outputs compatibility with, right? So in my curl command constructor, do I have it set the version? Do I have a a PS version, um, and and then when it in the constructor, it will get the current version and set the PS version on the class, and so it outputs in that version. And the reason I would do that on the class instead of on the output, because what if you're running in one version of PowerShell, converting the commands, but you want them to work in another set of PowerShell? Am I just overthinking this? Hmm. Or do we have a module scoped variable? Ooh, man, I might just have to make try one of these and see what happens. So I'm tempted. I'm okay. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate um, this change away from that supporting multi lines uh, because this change uh, I might try a couple of different things. Um, and supporting multi-line strings as a quick and easy fix. Um, document. Oh, I'm glad I have that up there so I remember to do it. Uh, so let's. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finish up today um, uh, by getting this PR for, and I actually gotta manually increment the version here. Uh, getting the PR out. Uh,
Now getting the sorry, I'm just repeating myself. Getting the PR out for this one issue, and yeah, version, version, and then adding that in, um, and then uh, from there. Sorry, multi line string change, uh, and then from and then from there, I'm going to publish this point zero zero two, um, and then uh, and then potentially maybe next stream take a look at adding adding support for specific targeted versions of invoke rest method. So honestly, it's going to be easier. I think I think what I'll do back actually what I'll do is I'm just going to, um, on module load, so I'll have a task inside the PSM1 that sets a um, sets the PS version. And, and then in the output, we'll assume that whatever version you're working on is, well, yeah. You know, I'll do it a module scope variable because here, I'll, I'll explain why as I go here. Uh, so uh, let's see, where's my branch? Actually, I can't. I can't do two things at once. Um, so, I'll, so when the module is loaded, I will set a module scope variable uh, for the targeted uh, PowerShell version, which will be set to the running version of PowerShell. Um, and then I'll have a set. I don't know, curl to PS targeted PowerShell version um, function, so that someone can set that. Uh, that way, the class itself, every time it runs, it's not only going to work with the running version of PowerShell, you can set that. And that's why I would do it with the module scope variable as well. No idea if I'm making any sense or not, but that's what I was thinking. All right, so let's switch over to the dev. Two commits, let's do a PR. This is gonna be pretty quick and easy, guys. There's not gonna be much else. Uh, that was number three. Yes. And so all I'm going to do here is just um, do a quick code review. Let's see, commit checks. Oh, whoops. That's not what I wanted. Oh, it's all misfiring over here. Okay, yeah, bumped version. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Looks good to me. Okay, so I'll use my administrator privileges to accept that. Okay, merged. And so then the last thing I'm going to do is just make sure this uh, build goes through. Where are we at? There we go. Okay, so build. So we should actually, yep, queue it up. Nice. Hooray for CI CD. And I don't need to sit here and watch this. Um, we'll actually just let that run. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks everyone who's still here. I'm gonna get this. I'll get this up on YouTube. Uh, oh, yeah, probably after I eat some food. <laughs> this is about lunch time for me. Um, but yeah, if you guys use this module, uh, I'd be. I'm happy to take feedback. I mean, you saw we've already got a. Uh, I've already got a PR request on it that I accepted. Um, so always happy to happy for help. Uh, so if you use it um, and you find a bug, let me know. Uh, you're welcome to fix it yourself. And but I'd appreciate it even if you don't have time to fix it to let me know about it because I can't fix problems I don't know about, right? And I may not use this in the same ways that you do. Well, I do use this. Like don't <laughs> like I wrote this so I could use it. Um, Nice, that looks good. So, yeah. I don't I don't have much else to say while I wait for this to uh, finish up. But thanks for hanging out. Nobody used the the VS or I forgot to mention to anyone that was jumped on later. Um, I set up the Twitch highlight streamer extension. I'll have to remember that last, next time. I don't know that it would have come in any, been any useful here. But, uh, yeah. 
I'm just gonna wait for this to finish and I'm gonna finish up. If anyone's got any questions or anything while I'm while I'm here, let me know. Nice. Oops, it's not the PowerShell Gallery, it's PowerShell Gallery. Okay, I just want to make sure that... Uh, .ps.02, nice. Zero downloads, woo! All right, cool. Well, hey, uh, thanks for chatting, those of you that did. Uh, thanks for hanging out, those of you that didn't. Well, I guess thanks for hanging out to everybody. Uh, I'm planning on streaming next week. Yeah, yeah, I'm planning on streaming next week. I should be here. So, have a wonderful week. See you guys around. And I don't know where the end stream button went. Oh, there it is. Have a good one.